Yes, sir. Sir, I have a very related question to this that I had in my mind for a long Very weird question. Yes. Huh? Related question. Yes, uh -huh. Say. Um, I have the uh, same problem actually, much bigger. When I in New York company, wearing your sober shape, but these sobers, it has an effect, you know, opens the heart up to Allah, which is our intention. Yes. And it stays like that for, you know, when I leave for a day, maybe two. Yes. And after that, I get so busy in my work, job, which, you know, I'm doing it as well. The need uh -huh. it takes me out of um, what I'm trying to do. For example, like yesterday, just giving you examples, I heard you so much about the Kurbuzu, so I started doing it, but I'm, I'm sure that when I get busy with work, I'm going to forget. In the past, I've tried many of those things, you know, before going to sleep the Dua for more for 40 days, sitting down 40 days, but after a few days, I get so absorbed in the word, it's not in the word, but that's my, you know, because you know, I earn from it, but I can't have my heart to where I desire it to be, and I know there's nifaq in it, but uh, when you said in the Sobat already, you have to balance at least spiritual training, but that's my desire and I don't know how to achieve You see, this is, uh, can, did you hear his question? Okay, his question saying that related to this, many times he's listening to the sohbat, advice that is given, he tries to practice it and then after some time and then he can't practice it anymore because it's, he's busy doing his obligations and other things and he feels very bad about it and he feels like he's being a hypocrite because he couldn't carry it through. This is one of the reasons why in this way in this Ahir Zaman, this is the most distinguished, this is the highest Sufi order. We are not concentrating on uh, Amal. We are not concentrating on worship. You understand? We are not concentrating on worship. We are not concentrating to give you new du'as every week, new uh, types of reading Quran, reading this and putting all the different things together every week, new zikr, new special salawats, new this, stay up tonight, we have to stay up all night and this and this. We're not concentrating, we're doing it a little bit here and there. It's not concentrating. Because the people of the Ahir Zaman, these today's people, you cannot carry it. And to carry something like that, you cannot just wear it one day and take it off another. So we're not concentrating on that. And it shouldn't be, because the people of these times, we are very busy doing other things. And of course, he's being humble. He is amongst, if not, he's the oldest one here. And he is leading the zikr, he is following everything properly, and yet he's understanding himself. He's saying that I cannot do, you talk about having cold wudu, I take cold wudu, and I know I'm going to forget. There is a man who knows his limitations, his boundaries. So. But still he's saying, I feel bad, what is it that I can do? So, we are not concentrating on that. Because people cannot carry that. They are, the uh, distractions of the Ahir Zaman is so great in these days. That any tariqat that says you have to do this much and this much and this much like that, they are completely out of touch with the heavens and completely out of touch with the mankind. You understand? Shah sure, Fendi, do you ever hear him, you ever hear me concentrate on say, did you do your wazifa? Did you do your wazifa today? Did you do your awrat? You have to do your awrat. You have to do your awrat. Uh, do we ever even talk about it? No, because they say nobody is doing the awrat. And it's not that. And in reality, all these worships, all these things, okay? Number one, even if we were to do it, it doesn't mean much. It doesn't mean much. Because Allah is looking at the worship that is pure. And living in these times, there's so much corruption outside and inside. In a way that no one in, let's say, the past 
100 years ago, we don't see that kind of corruption that is going to exist even like this in phones or everywhere, you understand? They, they don't have access to it. Now we have access any time that we want. There is a dirtiness, a corruption everywhere. During Shaykh and his time, he's concentrating on the TV. He's seeing sewer, shaitan box, television. And now this phone, you don't carry the shaitan box around you. Now this phone, you can put it in your pocket. You can take it out any time you want. It's worse than the shaitan box now. And dirtiness coming if you want to use it that way, which so many people use it that way too. So because of that corruption and everything, the awliya Allah in their wisdom, they are not concentrating on people saying that you have to do so many things like this. What are they concentrating on? As they did for over 1,000 years, concentrate on the heart. Concentrate on the intention. You understand? Concentrate on sincerity. Not how much you are doing, but how sincere you are doing. So you cannot do all of that so much. You cannot do your wazifa so much. You cannot make a zikir so much. You cannot do everything. What you can do? You can stop being stubborn a little bit more. That doesn't take time. You can stop being, you want to get angry, you want to curse at someone, stop. You want to feel arrogant and proud of it, stop. Ego is saying, do this, you're going to do that. You don't need to uh, spend so much time on. And that, fighting against your ego, that Jihad al-Akbar, the biggest Jihad now, doing that, from over one, for over 1,000 years, there is a higher worship now that cleans you up even more. Especially us coming from type of background where they say, oh, you are Muslim, then you have to do more. You, uh, you come back to your religion, first thing you have to do, people who off the road, and then when they want to come back to the road, they put it in us, first thing you have to do is you have to read Quran. You have to learn Arabic and read Quran and sit down and read, and then you become a good person. If reading the Quran become a good person like that, then why are we having so many shaitanic Muslims and shaitanic people who understands the uh, Arabic, they're still reading the Quran and it's not changing them. Hmm? If just by reading the Quran like that, then we can teach a bird, a parrot to read the Quran, it's not going to make that, that parrot to become a saint. So now reading, understanding is different. So now they say, what can you do? You can try to fight against your ego. They make it even easier now. What can you do? Try to be in the association of the beloved of Allah. That time, with one look, that friend of Allah can erase all the heaviness that you have, correct or no? We have all felt that with Shaykh Effendi. We come so heavy, where we sit with him and then suddenly it's all like everything is gone. Where has it gone to? Someone took it because we know we had it. We feel light, we feel free, we feel open. We feel clean that we cannot even feel like that if we stay one whole night worshipping like that. That is a specialty that these inheritors of the prophets, they have. That they open their hand and they pray for you because every time they look, their look is a worship. They don't just look, look, look like that. They go to see who needs help, who is this, who is that. And there, there is constant communication now between them and Allah. So they make it even easier. So those ways are the ways that are stuck with this and this and this. They're out of touch. When out of touch means there is no secret. You understand? Because now, the secret is there is only one pilot. Everyone else just sit in the back. Don't everyone try to become a pilot. Even if you try, even if the pilot says, this is how you must learn how to fly. You do this and this and this and this and this. But they don't expect anyone to fly. They are flying themselves, and everyone just sit. That's why love and the submission to the shahid is important, because that is what's going to help you. 
What is that love and that submission to the shaykh? What does it translate as? You're asking that shaykh to help you. That translates as shafat. You understand? That is the only thing that is going to save the prophets on the Day of Judgment. That they were waiting for the shafat of the Holy Prophet wasalam. On the Day of Judgment, this is an open hadith. Mankind will run on the Day of Judgment. Everyone is going to feel so much fear and anxiety. Everyone will be naked in so many different ways, not just physically also, but knowing that everything that we've ever done or thought or imagined, everything is exposed. Do you understand? Now people at that time, Hadith is saying, they're not running to Allah, are they? They're not running to Allah. No, we are here and people say, no, no, I run to only to Allah. That on Judgment Day, you are closer to Allah than here. And mankind is not running to Allah. We run first to Hazrat Adam salam, To say, Oh Father of mankind, Oh Ya Safiullah, help us. So there is knowledge there. Now you understand how far away you are from Allah. And there are uh, holy ones that are closer to you and they're close to Allah and you try to reach to them because you cannot reach to Allah. This is what Prophet is saying, mankind is going to run to Hazrat Adam and say, Ya Safi Allah, oh the first one of Allah, help us. Intercede for us, help us. And what Adam salam says, no, I cannot. I myself I'm waiting for Ahmad to come to intercede for me, meaning Holy Prophet والسلام, that is his name in paradise, because I had made a mistake. Now mankind is going to run to Nuh salam, saying, Ya Nuh, O second father of mankind, the one that Allah has saved you from the flood, save us. And Nuh salam says, I cannot save you. I myself is in need of safety because I open my hand and ask Allah to bring disaster to this world and the flood happened. I don't know if I am going to be saved. This is Nuh salam saying. And they will run to the next one and to the next one and to the next one. Every prophet they're going to run to. They come to Hazrat Isa salam. Oh Ruhullah, they say. Oh, the Spirit of Allah. Save us. You who is without sin, save us. And Isa salam is going to say, My nation calls me Allah and the Son of Allah. I still don't know what my outcome is going to be. I cannot save you. They're running, running, running until Holy Prophet comes and everybody is going to rush to him. And that is one of the things that's going to be open to him on the Day of Judgment to intercede. Intercession works when you trust that the person can help you, when you love the person. Intercession is not, if you, if you don't believe he's going to save you, you're going to go your own way, nothing is going to help now. So who believes in intercession these days? That used to be very important in Ali Sunnah wa Jama'ah. But the balance is, we're not saying just concentrate on the shafaat. We're saying you have to do, you have to strive, you have to worship, you have to do everything. But to know everything that you've done now, don't depend on it. Depend on the mercy of Allah. Depend on the intercession of the Prophet. This is what, Hazrat Adam, what did he do? He did one, one thing. But everything he did before that and after that is in complete submission to his Lord. Nuh salam, he did one thing, everything he did before, over 900 years, he called his nation to Ahirat and his nation will beat him up until he's all broken. He goes somewhere, he becomes better, he comes again. One day they beat him up again, he goes back hundreds of years and nobody listened to him. Out of millions of people, only 73 people came. His own son cursing at him. All the prophets, they did so much, they sacrificed so much, yet they are not relying 
on what they have done. They're not relying on their worship. They're not relying on their uh, hizmat. But they're relying on the intercession of the Prophet. Intercession is coming with the mercy of Allah. That's why in the Ahli Sunnah way, we have to know this. This is a very big, important fact. It's a secret. What keeps you? It keeps you. This keeps you humble also. This is when, just like what we say, the Sultan that is walking with all this majesty, looking at everything, he owns his power and everything, yet there is a voice in front of him, clear to everyone and to himself, don't forget Allah is greater than you. You understand? Now this call that Allah is greater than us, this call to say, don't depend on this, that is what you have done, because Allah is also greater than that. This was what was keeping the Ahli Sunnah and Ahli Tariqat people, this world, to be in balance. Today, people are being like sultans, very proud of their worship, very proud of their ibadat, very proud of what they have done, saying, guaranteed, I'm going to go. Well, Allah, Allah, but who knows, but guaranteed, of course, I don't need anyone's intercession. People have become sultans. Not sultans, tyrants. You understand? Because even the sultans, they understood where their limits are. This is why we are holding on to our sheikhs, Jubba. And that one is holding on to his sheikhs, Jubba, connected to over 40 generations, 40 grand sheikhs to the Holy Prophet, alayhi Whose Jubba are we holding? The same Jubba that the prophets are holding. The Holy Prophet, alayhi Important for us to know. Now, whatever that you're doing, you're not going to feel too, too proud about it. Whatever that you're doing, you're going to say, Alhamdulillah, Allah opened the way. But you're not going to depend on it also. You cannot. You must not. If you are going to depend, what are you going to depend on? Uh, your deeds or Allah's mercy? Never depend on your deeds. Depend on Allah's mercy. So, you cannot do so many of those things. You can make your connection to your shaykh stronger. Ah, this is when Rabita enters. You understand? This is when you're going to use Rabita. Rabita means what? Connection to your shaykh. Rabita is what? Let's say, like this or like that, Rabita is like Taqwa. Taqwa is a person who is uh, understanding that Allah is with them and they are with Allah. But how are you going to understand Allah? There is no, Allah is not Alif Lam Lam Ha. If you think Allah is just this presence, is more than that, looking at me like this, what is that? How? Allah is beyond all description. But now to get that Taqwa to understand that Slowly, step by step, first you understand what it means to be in the oceans of your shaykh and to bring into the oceans of the Prophet So Rabita now, to know that your shaykh is always with you. Like what the khutbah today is saying. What, you think a wall can separate a murid from his shaykh? Today's khutbah is saying, if you are here, you are like this. You're going to do these things. Are you going to do these things if the shaykh is here? As much as you can. Maybe it's hard when you're younger. As you get older, it must get easier. It must get easier. It must get easier. Because that is also a blessing. The desires of a, 20, of a 40 year old is different from a 20 year old. 50 year old is different. 60 years old is different. It's getting less. It's not getting more. That is a blessing. Because now, imagine if you're 60, 70, 80 years old and your desires is same, then there is no difference. Then you are in disaster. You must have more control over it. That's why 40 years old. 40 years old, you actually just start to become a man. Because the blood is not hitting to your head and making you to go crazy anymore. You have some, some breathing room a little bit. Now you start going. That is the first year that you are going to be a man. 
You understand? So, to have the rabita of your shaykh, to be in the presence of your shaykh. Simple, one way we may say. Because the shaykh, spiritual powers is something else completely. You say, my shaykh is here with me. Am I here with my shaykh? He is watching me. Am I watching myself? You cannot do that 24 hours, don't. Do it some hours. You cannot do it some hours, don't. Do it once in a while. The whole thing is to be in constant state of remembrance. Because you forget, then you are going to remember. You must make yourself to remember. Understand? And then that time, you cannot do so many things, but you can just remember. And as much as you are practicing it, you are going to be able to. Well, inshallah, when you're becoming more, uh, less and less uh, busy with the um, dunya, then you become more busy, then it's much easier. Now, <coughs> when you become less busy with the dunya, then that time there is no separation. Everywhere you turn, you're going to see the face of your shaykh. Yes. It's not as if his face is going to pop up like that, but everything is going to remind you of something of him, of him, you understand? And he's going to start speaking to you. This is why we are keeping the sunnah. Keeping the sunnah is not just keeping the sunnah. It is forbidden for man to sit like this. We're not just sitting like this. We're sitting like this, not just to remember the Prophet, not just because if we sit like this, there's no power that's going to reach to us, not just because we sit like this, we're going to get blessings, but because when you start <coughs> imitating that, you'll remember him. You will remember him. You understand? And when you remember him, you know who else remembers him? Allah and His angels and all of creation remembers Him. So now your relationship to that is different now. It is not just for what you are gaining now. You start doing things physically also, slowly the spirit enters. But there has to be a connection, you have to put meaning inside of it. You just say, I'm just going to do all these things without any meaning then you can be living inside the Kaaba, but there's no meaning. You can be living inside the Dargah, but there is no meaning. You're going to find it very boring because you're not putting the meaning to it. And the Sohbat is to remind us what that meaning is. Inshallah, we will remember. It will be easy. May Allah forgive us for the sake of the Holy Prophet, for the sake of the beloved ones in our Shaykh Al-Fatiha.